Hello my dudes and welcome back to the Steampunk Saga. Last episode we did a complete rebuild in the Steampunk style. And in the aftermath of that we had a bit of a leak with the Town Hall building. There was water everywhere. So let me take you back and show you what we've done to tidy that up. Now again we've just used oak logs, I think mostly oak fences, there's some spruce here because I ran out of oak. We'll kind of tidy that up later on once we have the resources. But yeah, we tried to incorporate the water into the town itself. So the water flows down here and leaks into the river, kind of river, the stream that runs underneath the town hall. It looks pretty cool. And also over here, next to the builder's hut and the tavern, we've neatened up the coast a bit. It's far from done, but we have the makings of a bank wall in the very sustainable style of cobblestone and oak logs. Now I also took the opportunity to move my base over here next to the tavern. There was this nice bit of flat land and before we build something here, which we will do, we've moved our makeshift base over here. But that makes me realize actually maybe it's time we built our player house at last. Somewhere to move all this stuff and keep things nice and tidy. Well let's jump in and give it a go. So very early on, it's kind of easy to get caught in the trap of just spamming down chests and chucking everything wherever it'll go. That's convenient and easy, but it makes finding stuff a real nightmare. So what we've done is we put down some signs and kind of given our chests a bit of a theme. We've got natural over here. Oh yeah, all the good stuff, the food. In fact, I might need some food, so I'll take some baked potatoes. We've got building blocks. These are the essential things that go to make buildings, basically. Create for when we get some more create stuff. At the moment, it's just andesite, but that's essential. Tools, weapons, and gear, of course, might need uh, the build tool for sure. Maybe a sword might come in handy. And of course, a pickaxe, an axe, and a shovel, always good to have on hand. And then over here, resources, the things we gather up in the mines that are kind of components for other things we build. Great stuff. A bit of iron in here, a lot of copper, but nowhere near enough, let me tell you that now. And of course, yeah, this is Copper Vale. So the Waystone is now called Copper Vale. And let's go into the Town Hall and make sure the colony is called Copper Vale as well. We can also say hello to some of our new arrivals. How's it going? Lucius Snack. We've also got over here, who are you? Oh, Sir Wolf, we know about you. What are you doing at the tavern? Oh, right, you're unemployed. And upstairs we have Dorka Akizuki. Oh man, look at that commanding beard. Love it. Ambriel is out of work and just holding a torch. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty well lit. You don't need the torch, Ambriel, but you know what? That's fine. And we have some guys over here loitering by the town hall. Helga Peasant and Sir Machuf. Were you guys having a bit of, you know, a bit of a conversation? So yeah, here we go. Up to the town hall block and let's rename the colony. At the moment, it is still just stink butt. That's not what we want. So goodbye, stink butt, and hello... Copper Vale, oh yeah. An amazing name, and once again, thank you for all of your suggestions about names. I always love to read your guys' comments, so do keep them coming in. Also, don't forget to smash that like button on the video to give it a thumbs up. The more likes a video has, the more likely I am to make more of those videos, although don't worry too much, because we are locked into this series. We're gonna make a massively amazing steampunk city. So, to that end, let's take a look at the player house I've designed. Now it's always a good move, I think. If you want to make a complicated building, design it in creative mode because the actual designing part takes a long time. Then once you're happy with what you've got, you can put it into a schematic or a blueprint for either mine colonies or create using the schematic cannon, which we're not going to use, and have the builder build it for you. It makes things much easier. So let's take a look at the player house I've designed. Switch pack to my local pack go into scans and here we go. So this is a two part build. The first one is the simple home and the second one is the create workshop add on. Let me show you how they work. So basically, yeah, let's get a bit of a bird's eye view. So here we go, my dudes, feast your eyes on what is going to become our player house. It's not an insanely complicated build. We could have gone a bit more decorative with things like the architect cutters blocks. But the important thing I think with a player house is that it's relatively simple to build. So we've got some spruce logs, some stripped spruce logs, some shingles on the roof. And yeah, basically this house is relatively simple on the building materials. Now the key features are a massive windmill, 
that we can turn into a create windmill. We've got animal pens over here, ready to move our animals into. We've got a, a small area for a very small farm, and over there, a well, that's a great place to just store an infinite source of water early on. The interior is of course the interior, and you can design that how you want to. So we're gonna set this flush against the boundaries of the colony for now. Make sure we've got a little room behind. Yeah, that looks okay, and I reckon we are good to go. Now, even though this building uses simple materials, it is still gonna be quite tricky for us to build. So we'll press go, and let me show you exactly what's involved in this. So yeah, as you can see, very basic materials. Now there is a little bit of stone brick, 192, but also very importantly, there's a lot of stripped spruce logs. However, the hardest thing for us to get is gonna be the red brick shingles. There's a few of these used, 232. And I've dyed them red as well, because I think a red roof looks amazing. But as tricky as it is to make, it's gonna be worth it in the long run. So we'll get this built. Now step one of the build is always carving out the land, getting rid of some of this grass, some of the um, some of the dirt, maybe some of the stone on the floor. So we'll leave Ambriel to that while we try and find some materials to get this thing built. And this is where we're gonna start dipping into create. So basically, I don't wanna have to strip all of those logs myself. So we're gonna create a very simple create mod log stripper. So I guess you could call this episode getting started with create because that's exactly what we're gonna do. So what is the first step? We're gonna put on the left, over by those items over there, the important things. These are the important things we're gonna to need to get started with Create. So the wrench, yes, essential. A water wheel for power. They're slightly easier to build than windmills. Cogs and shafts to move that power around, as well as gearboxes. And then the actual machine itself, the mechanical saw. This will strip the logs. We'll need belts to move stuff around and an andesite funnel to get stuff in and out of chests. Very essential. So we kind of have a two birds, one stone situation here. We need clay for the bricks, but we're also gonna need loads and loads of kelp. So let's go and see if we can find some clay in the water and maybe an ocean where we can get that kelp because that kelp is gonna be essential. Now, luckily enough, clay is always kind of easy to find. It's a pain to get because it doesn't stack very well and it's in the water. Digging stuff in the water is always a bit of a pain but it's not gonna be hard to find, and if we persevere, we will get enough for all of these red bricks. Now, to make the bricks actually red, we're also gonna to need to gather some flowers along the way. Let's just turn that into more. And again, on any journey, you're gonna find loads and loads and loads of red flowers, no matter where you go. It's always an easy find. So dyeing things red, yellow, white, or blue, very simple. And luckily enough, they're kind of the primary colors, so easy to kind of get from there to whatever you want to have. The only tricky dye to get, I think, early on is green, because you need cactus, which is why we're not using cactus. Okay, so we've got a reasonable amount of clay now. The tricky part is going to be finding some ocean. So a look at the map shows us, oh my god, what happened there? What's up? What's up with that? Look at that hard line. That's very weird. But I don't see any ocean. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the river all the way down here past this weird structure that we can check out along the way, and then maybe if we're lucky, there's some ocean down here because this area here does open up. So my friends, let's go on a bit of an adventure down the river. Oh yeah. So let's take a moment to chill and admire some of the scenery and the generated landscape as we sail gently down the river. Oh man, such an amazing, amazing biome, amazing seed. Got really lucky with this one. Do have to watch out for crocodiles though. Those are deadly. So as we sail down the river, I want to pose a question to you guys. What do you think is the most important building we build for the colony next? I'm tempted to lean towards the warehouse. It's a great place to store stuff and essential for the future of our colony. But is it so essential that we want it to be our next build? I don't know. So let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are. Ah oh man, though, what a beautiful day. So IRL over here in England, it's insanely hot. I think it's like 25 degrees Celsius. Oh, and my skin is melting off, like to the bone. Just so hot. Hope you guys are enjoying good weather wherever you are, but I am melting. I'm in the melting pot right here. All right, through the bridge. There we go, nice and simple. Aha! 
So this is it. This is what we found on the map. This giant structure. What is it? I've got to find out. I've got to know. It looks amazing. There could be good loot inside. There could also be very dangerous monsters. Gilded Blackstone. That's very useful. Could come in handy down the line. Oh, there's, there's a lot of nether stuff in here. Nether wart blocks. That's really, really useful. Well, okay, yeah, this place seems quite empty. There's nothing going on here, really. Oh, chests, though. Let's take a look in here. Nice. Some uh, nether brick can be thrown. Good to know. And over here, some gunpowder. That could come in really handy. But yeah, uh, pretty slim pickings as far as loot goes. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe if we dig down in the middle, there'll be something groovy down there. Also, this obsidian looks like it's loosely in the pattern of a nether portal. So we could fire this up and use it as a nether portal, although it's a bit far away. Anyway, let's get back to the boat. And oh yeah, look at this, a flowering azalea. Very essential. That's going to come in really handy if we can get this grown and on farm. Oh no, <laughs> it looks like oh, we've got an uninvited guest in our boat. There's a turtle. Are you in the boat? With me? Oh my god, yes, he's with us on our adventure. That's amazing. So come with me, turtle boy, Terry Tibbs. Let's go and find some kelp. Oh no, my dudes. <laughs> oh, so we're trying to go south into this part of the river and we're landlocked. So I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, my, my turtle friend. This is where we must part ways. Oh no, he's mad. He's, he's spinning like a like a Beyblade, like a little turtle Beyblade. He does not like the fact that we've abandoned him. Well, I'm sorry, dude, but maybe, you know, maybe we'll come back for you. No, you know what? This is important, so I'm going to pick him up. Oh, that's the boat. Come here. We'll pick up the boat. Pick up the turtle. Where's he gone? There he is. Oh, he's quick in the water, isn't he? There we go. You're coming with me, my turtle friend. Is this kidnapping? No, I don't think you can kidnap animals. Put the boat down. Pick up the turtle. Put the turtle in the boat. Yeah, there he is. Let's go. Ow! Oh my, oh my god. He is, <laughs> he is a bit of a liability. This guy will almost kill me. So do you know what? There's plenty of other turtles. We're going to leave this liability behind, I think. So my friends, sometimes the luckiest of seeds has the unluckiest of biome locations. We've gone far and wide, all the way south, pretty far, and we haven't run into ocean yet. Uh, we're in trouble. Now I think we might actually have some kelp in our chest. So what we can do, instead of gathering it from the ocean, we're going to have to grow it at home. It's a good plan anyway, because coming really far to grab kelp is always a bit of a pain. So we're going to head home and set up a rudimentary kelp farm. Yeah, here it is. Perfect kelp. So kelp grows like sugarcane, but in the water. So all we need is somewhere deep to put this down. This'll do. This is probably going to be deep enough. And we'll toss a couple down here. And of course, to expedite things, I'm going to go and grab some bone meal. And this is where having those composters does come in really handy. If I was smart, I would have set them up with like a hopper and a chest and uh, just grown the bone meal that way, but I'm not smart. So let's find that kelp. There we go, this is the kelp, right? Yeah, lovely stuff, looks great. Let's make this grow, chop it off at the bottom. Grab that stuff up. Now watch out, because catfish can actually steal your kelp. No catfish around, but oh no, there's a guy. That guy is chief kelp stealer. So watch out for those guys, they will steal your kelp. Oh no, look, here he comes, he's trying to get the kelp. Get back, you fiend. Ooh, he's gonna kill me. Where's the rest of the kelp? Oh my god, there's another catfish! I reckon that guy stole our kelp. Let's go and punch it out of him. Yeah, there we go! Give me back that kelp. <laughs> These guys, they're so greedy! Anyway, my dudes, we have 21 kelp. That's enough for, I think, three belts. Good to get going. Let's get this cooked. So yeah, my friends, let's get started with create. The first thing we're going to do is just grab up some of this andesite, the important things we need to get things built. We'll need some iron ingots, some nuggets as well. Shouldn't need any copper or anything like that just yet. A gold ingot, that's going to be quite essential. 
So step one is andesite alloy. You make this with iron ingots into nuggets. There we go. Split this diagonally, combine it with andesite, and we get andesite alloy. Very important. Basically the building block of create. Very cool. Oh, and we even made an advancement there. Now we have this andesite alloy, we can turn it into shafts. Very essential. We'll need a lot of these, so I reckon probably, yeah, 32, a good number. Now we can combine the shafts with a bit of wood, and that's going to get us some gears. Oh yeah, it's all very simple, very, very, very simple. And then combine these gears with wood again, and you get bigger gears. We might need a few of these, so we'll make four. Now let's start from the start. We want to make a large water wheel. Boom. You need a small water wheel to begin with, which is just a shaft surrounded by wood. Then you put that in there, surrounded by even more wood, and it gets even bigger. It's not always the right move to use a large water wheel, because while it can generate more power, it also spins a lot slower. So early on, it's probably worth using a small water wheel, if we're being honest. So we want the framework now for where our water wheel is going to go. We're going to build it. It's going to be pretty dirty set up this. It's not going to be a very pretty one, but it's going to work. This is basically just to get us early game stuff with little hassle. So here we go, a nice little area for some water wheels. Now we can put one down. We'll choose the smaller one first. This is going to fit here quite nice. We are going to need a few more though. So let's get that built. One, two, there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these next to each other and make like a triple water wheel. Excellent stuff. Now we're going to power that water wheel with, of course, the power of water. Power of one, power of two, power of water. Here we go. Now, there's much more efficient ways to do this. Um, yeah, what I think we're going to do is get some dirt and give it a back over here. Build this up like that. And put the water in the back over here. This should flow down and power the water wheel. Yeah, it goes down the side and the bottom. We'll get a few more waters in there to get it even more power. You want a source block on each one of these dirt, I reckon. And there we go, water power, excellent. This is feeding power out through this shaft, so we're going to use some gears to get that to where we want it to be. But where do we want that to be? Well, we're going to make a pretty simple sawmill setup. We're going to need some stone to put some chests on, and some chests themselves. Here we go. Now this seems like a bit overkill, but it's worth doing. It's always worth going into Create for two reasons. Number one, Create is really fun. Always fun to do. So where are we going to put this stuff? Well, we're going to put a chest over here. Boom. On here. This is going to be the input. We're going to send logs into here. They are going to go along a conveyor belt. We'll put the shafts for the conveyor belt like this. Then in the middle here, we have the saw blade. This is going to do the sawing. It's going to saw the logs. Then a conveyor belt on this side is going to carry those logs into a chest. So we'll put another chest over here. Sounds very simple, right? We'll get the kelp out of here, the dried kelp. Need to cook the rest of it though, so we'll put some more fuel in there. And then six kelp, like this, will make you a mechanical belt. Essential. Plug this onto two shafts. Right click and right click, and you get, yeah, a conveyor belt. You can do the same thing over here. Amazing. Now we need the other part of the machine, which is going to be the mechanical saw. I don't think it's too hard to make. Let's take a look. Yeah, andesite casing iron sheets, and iron ingots. Okay, so we do need to get some iron sheets. That's going to be a bit tricky. And this is going to have to be the first step. You can't make the create saw until you have something that can make iron sheets. So instead of a saw, we're going to use a stamper. And let's take a look for this. So it's the mechanical, what is it, a pounder? A press. There we go, a mechanical press. You use andesite casing, a shaft, a block of iron. Okay, yeah, that's super simple. 
Oh man, it always feels like a waste though, making things that require a block of iron. Crazy. So how do we get andesite casing? Well, this is pretty simple. You put down some logs, use an axe on them to strip them, then you get your andesite alloy and on the stripped logs, you just right click. Boom, there we go. And now we're in the andesite age. You can dig these up and you've got yourself some andesite casing. Now that's a bit convoluted and that's why it's usually a good idea to make a create machine that can make you andesite casing. Now the stamper is a very simple tool, so simple in fact that we only need one conveyor belt for this. So we've gone a bit overkill there. We can dig that up and put down just the one belt. One belt to rule them all. There we go, much better. So we've got the bits, we've got the andesite casing, the block of iron, and then the shaft on top to get us a mechanical press. Amazing. Now we need to put this down. Uh, so. This block has to be, I think, two blocks above the belt. So we'll get some dirt for now, because this is very easy to dig up. And there we go. And we'll put the belt against this like that there we go and this is in the right place right position everything looks good that's going to come down and stamp whatever's on the conveyor belt good to go but now we need to make sure we can get some spinny force into the mechanical press so the direction which the spinny force turns is important for conveyor belts if it goes the wrong way the conveyor belts will go the wrong way but there's no wrong way for it to go into the mechanical press whichever way it's spinning will be fine cool 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 Now we could use gearboxes to kind of move the shafts around and get things in the right way, but it's gonna be much easier for us to just skip straight to cogwheels. This is where Create really shines. There's like a million and one different ways for you to feed power into things. And yeah, check this out. The cogwheel can go there. You can put another cogwheel underneath like this, and that is spinning in the right direction. If we put a shaft on that, yeah, look at this. Now we've got the conveyor belt going in the right direction. Amazing. Pick up that dirt and now put one more final cog piece up here. Cog piece, cod piece. And we have a stamper. So now iron that goes onto this belt, we'll just toss one for the moment, is going to get stamped. Now again, yeah, it's a very, very, very slow process. That water wheel is spinning really, really, really slowly. So... Oh yeah, this is gonna take forever. Oh my God, look how slow that is. Bonk, <laughs> but it is, it is still very cool. There are tricks you can do to speed up the rotation of your gears though. But we'll get into that later because at the moment, all that really matters is that this works. Now the final piece of the puzzle is an andesite funnel. You use andesite alloy and dried kelp to make these, and they're basically, yeah, like input pipes for chests. So dried kelp, one andesite alloy, two andesite funnels, the perfect amount. One here, one here. And now, my dudes, we have automation. Put a couple of these in here, four we'll say, and these are gonna slowly come out, get stamped, and we'll have iron sheets, amazing. So for the wrench from Create, we're gonna need gold sheets. Okay, and that's a good use for our gold. We've got the machinery now to make this, so we can put three gold ingots in here, and these will also get stamped, albeit at a very slow rate. So we needed iron sheets to make the mechanical saw. Now we have that, we can in theory just repeat the same idea next to it and get ourselves a sawmill. Let's do it. Now the mechanical saw goes down here, like that, although, ooh, it's facing the wrong way. What do we do if something's facing the wrong way? Well, you can dig it up and keep trying to place it in the right orientation, or we can grab this golden sheet that we have in here, these three, make ourselves a wrench, and use the wrench to turn things around. Because you know what? I'm all about the wrenching. There we go, big moment, the wrench. So we use this on the mechanical saw, and depending on where you click is how it's gonna turn the block. This looks good to me. And there we go, we're almost set up, almost good to go. We'll grab some dried kelp out of here. 12 is enough for a couple more belts. Like that, hook these shafts up to the belts and these are all going in the right direction. 
And this is where things get tricky. So the mechanical saw has to turn in the direction against whatever's coming. So this has to turn anti-clockwise around like that. Now, this isn't actually too bad. The gear here is turning clockwise. So if we can put a gearbox between these, that's gonna reverse the direction of the shafts and make our saw spin in the right direction. So a gearbox is very simple to do. Get some shafts, combine them with wood, four should do. Then you put those gears in like a four shape around an andesite casing and we get a gearbox. Yeah, very essential. Plonk this in between. And there we go. Now this is spinning anti-clockwise the direction we want. So the moment of truth, can we strip our logs like this? We're gonna need a lot of stripped spruce. So let's try and put a stack in here. Oh no, hang on a sec. Whoa, what's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Hang on a sec. We've got an issue here. We've got a big issue. Get these spruce logs out. Something's going wrong. So it looks like the mechanical saw is defaulting to something we don't want. Hollow spruce logs? No. So what we can do is we can set the recipe ourselves by making one stripped spruce. Plunking that in the filter, recipe filter. And now what should happen is when we put a spruce log in here, it'll make that stripped spruce, if we're lucky. Come on, my dude. There we go, now we fixed it. Okay, perfect. Let's get these spruce logs back in the machine. But it's important that we caught that, because otherwise we would have had a stack of hollow logs kind of useless. So we have a metal sheet maker, we have a sawmill that's very handy. The last create machine I wanna make that's gonna help us speed up our build of our house and all of our builds going forwards is an improved smelter. We can smelt things with create and we can actually smelt them really quickly if we use an encased fan. Encased fans are not especially difficult to craft. We'll need iron sheets and a site alloy so a few more of these iron through our stamping setup. One, two. But yeah, essentially, this is really cool. Basically, what you do with a create encased fan is you... Let's see how it's used, for one. So we want to use bulk blasting. You blast air through lava onto a block, and it smelts it. There's 76 recipes here, but the important one we want for the moment is probably, yeah, stone bricks. We can put cobblestone on one side and it'll get us cooked stone on the other side that we can then turn into stone bricks. That's really cool. And this is incredibly easy to set up as well. It's well worth doing early on. So we have all the pieces for an encased fan. Here is the propeller. Amazing. We have andesite casing and the shaft. Boom. Now, one important thing is the rotation of the shaft you put this on decides whether it's pushing or pulling. Luckily enough, this is pushing, and that's what we want. The speed at which the shaft is turning dictates how far this thing pushes. You can stand in front, though, to get a rough idea about how far this pushes. And it looks like it pushes things three blocks back. So we'll dig out a bit of a trench here, and we're going to put the lava in front of the encased fan. Then we're going to put three depots here that are going to be the inputs for where we want things smelted. Does that sound complicated? A little bit. I'll show you what we're doing. So yeah, the depot. This is a very important craft as well. It's also a very simple craft. We'll need some more andesite casing. So let's gather up some of this stripped spruce. Very useful. Put it down on the floor. Bash it with some andesite alloy. And there we go, more casing. So yeah, a depot, we need three of these. So it's andesite alloy and andesite casing. One, two, three, boom. And we'll put these in front of the encased fan. Now this is embedded in the floor at the moment. It looks a little bit ugly, but this setup isn't about looking good. This is just getting some simple create machines down. They're gonna speed up what we're doing. But the important part now is getting the lava in here. Okay, got the bucket. Let's go and grab some. There's gotta be some on the map. Oh yeah, look at this. Let's go and rob the mountain. Let's go and rob the volcano of this one right here. 
Ah, yeah, the colony over there. We'll get rid of that boat over there. Oh my god, it does look ugly, doesn't it? But here we go, yeah. We've got the lava up here. Where is the source block, though? We've got to get the source. Got to get the lava at the source. All the way up, climbing up Dragon Skull Mountain. Oh man, flashbacks to Crown Conquest. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. The hot stuff. Let's get home. Ooh. Ooh, very close. So now we simply just put the lava here. It's going to flow down and... Yeah, it looks a little bit ugly, like I said, but there's no real wood for this to set fire to. Looking pretty good. You can see the particles now have gone orange. That means they're good to go. So this is excellent. What we can do now is go into the building blocks chest, grab out some cobblestone. There we go. Put this on our hotbar to make it much easier. And here we go, a stack of each of these on each of these depots. Very cool. Now, imagine this. This is a stack, 64 cobblestone. If I put this into a regular furnace, this would take, oh, I don't know, like 10 minutes to do the whole stack. With Create, it does the whole thing in about 20 seconds. Look at this. I mean, maybe 30 seconds is more accurate. It's, it's much, much quicker, though. I mean, check it out. Come on. Come on, guys, you're embarrassing me. Yeah, there we go, look at this. Processing by particle, so much quicker. That's three stacks done in the blink of an eye. But it's not just good for cobblestone, no siree, Bob. What we can also do is grab out some of the clay that we gathered earlier on our little expedition, put this on the pedestals, and boom. This is gonna turn into bricks at the same speed that the cobblestone turned into stone, very quickly. And there we go, three stacks of bricks. Great weapons, but also great building materials. So you want to make this into red brick extra. Red brick extra. This is the one. This is what goes to make our shingles. It's a relatively simple craft as well. You use red dye in the middle, four bricks around the edge, and you get red brick extra. Very good rate. We will need that red dye. So let's go over to the natural chest. I think I picked up some red flowers as well. So with just a little bit of red dye, some bricks around the edge, we're going to have some red brick extra. Amazing, very useful. Take a look in our resource scroll to see what it's combined with for the shingles. Right, so the support material is oak planks. That's good, we've got loads and loads of those. Turn these logs into planks. Over here at the Architect's Cutter, pick the shingles. The main material is red brick extra. The secondary material is oak. And bam, oh my god, yeah, already a hundred, we're well on the way. Well, my guys, I think I've got all I need now, all the machines are set up. I'm gonna get to gathering and crafting the remainder of what's required for this player house build. It's very simple, nothing too crazy, we're already halfway towards the shingles, so shouldn't take me too long, and let's watch the time-lapse build. So the player house, now this schematic is available to Patreon and YouTube members over on the Discord if you want to download it and use it in your own world. It's pretty cool, it's made out of very simple materials as well. Everything is gatherable at a very early stage of the game. I was tempted to go very decorative and really flex my building skills, but it's very important that your first buildings, especially the player house, is achievable. The last thing you want is a player house that takes an insane amount of materials to build. This is pretty simple, but I still think it looks very cool. The house comes with a ground and second floor and a tower in the back that's already set up and primed to be fitted with a Create Windmill, so it's going to be really cool to get that windmill in position. And there's also a sister blueprint to go with this build. There's an incorporated Create Workshop that we're going to build pretty soon, maybe next episode, that attaches onto this house and uses the power of the windmill. That's going to be really cool. And we're going to be able to get our machines from our basic base at the moment over to this brand new house. Very exciting. Also, as a player house, I think it's essential to give players a place to put their cows and their sheep, as well as an area to do some easy early farming. So all in all, I'm really happy with this build. I can't wait to get my stuff inside it and get it decorated. 
And also we're gonna have to modify the terrain a little bit around the house to make it look a bit more sensible, like it fits. But yeah, amazing, great job Ambriel. Maybe next episode we can get back to the colony though and build a warehouse. But for now, let's get in game and take a look at this amazing building. Oh yeah, this thing looks super amazing. Can't wait to get my stuff inside here, but let's take a look and I can show you around our new house, right. So we've got a well outside. This is a good source of infinite water just because we don't have like kitchen sinks or any weird modded blocks in this. So that's gonna come in useful down the line. We got flower beds. Now I made a slight mistake while building this. Whoops, this hatch is not supposed to be there. So if you build this at home, you can fix that like that. But yeah, we can put some flowers in here, make it look nice. I might put some of the same quark yellow glass we have here in the front windows, but I also might leave them open. Got a flower bed out back, and yeah, it's a pretty modest, small kitchen down here, but we can make it work. The back door over here leads to, yeah, some animal pens. These are gonna be perfect to put our cows and sheep in. Can't wait for that. And a little farm out here. It's not very big, in fact, it's pretty tiny, but a great place to grow early crops just to get you going. And of course the bedroom, yeah, now this thing looks amazing. Some of the beams from downstairs are exposed. I love the way you can kind of marry oak slabs with logs to get this kind of like rippled effect with the beams, but it does mean that you need to cover up the room upstairs. So we're gonna put some carpet down and cover up that ugly beam. But yeah, we can plonk our bed up here, looking pretty good. And the tower on the left, this is primed, like I said, for a create windmill. And what we can do is, I'll just open this up for you now and show you, go in here, and you can see, yeah, you can feed a shaft all the way down here from the windmill, and this is gonna come over through here into the create workshop that's gonna be attached to the building once we build that. But oh man, I'm very impressed, very happy with this build. Now, a massive thank you for watching. If you want to build this at home, you can become a Patreon or YouTube member, hop on the Discord, and get access to our Blueprints channel, and put this in your own world. Next episode, it would be nice to get the Create Lab built so we can move some of those machines that are over there up into a place where they make sense. But things are really going well. It's about time we started some Create, so I'm glad we got started with that this episode. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment about what building you think we should be building for the colony next episode. But until then, my dudes, take care.